Hey everybody, we're just waiting for YouTube to go live and then we're going to say happy Friday everybody. Uh, as always, we will be doing our giveaways for comments, answers, and shares, so make sure you get those in. And when you share, please remember to share publicly so we can see that you've shared. Um, we will be giving away, today we will be giving away this iron, and we will be giving away, count them, eight time traveler sets so that you can travel miles in style with a smile. And we will be doing eight today because we are talking products today. We are talking about how to get the most out of your products, whether they're ours or someone else's. We're talking about how to get the most out of them. I think this will be really fun today because it helps me understand um, what you are in, what you don't instinctually know. Because we are doing Q and A today, so you can write your questions about your products and how to get the most out of them so that we can, it helps me understand because sometimes, sometimes I just don't understand what I instinctually know. So this has been a, this has been a big topic of conversation around here this week because the other day I was trying to explain a concept to my husband Dan that he had trouble grasping. So it made me had an, had an aha moment. We were working on investing in cryptocurrency and I usually get excited about something and then we talk about how much to invest, then he makes the trade. And he was telling me how I needed to learn more about actually making the trade. And I was thinking like, you don't understand, this is going to take me a long time to learn. And he's like, no, it's easy, you just do this. And I, what I had, what I walked away from, from this conversation is, you have no idea how easy it is for you and how hard it is for me. And it got me thinking like, I bet you this is gonna be easy for Jenny too, like this whole investing in cryptocurrency. And lo and behold, she did it yesterday and completely easy for her. And I'm wondering, does anyone understand like when something's very easy for you and it's hard for other people, but when it's easy for you, you don't really understand why it's easy for you. So this has been our huge topic of conversation. So we have like all these little exercises. Have you guys seen the movie Goodwill Hunting where he was talking to his girlfriend, I think it was Minnie Driver, and Minnie Driver was like, you know, cause he wasn't in college and he was teaching her how to do her math. And she was like, how do you understand this math? It's like a really hard math. And he was like, you know how you can play the piano and you're really good at it, so she was really good at it, and he goes, well, when it comes to math, I can just play. So we've been working on how to discover what you can just play, because I think it's really easy for you to go, um, yeah, like I can point out what Jenny's really good at, like boom, instantly. I know what she's really good at, because I'm not great at it, and I can I can see that skill set in her. So it dawned on me that it's it's, I'm not sure that anyone realizes what comes easy to them. So we're gonna play a little game today and I want you guys to play along with me, okay? So get your comments ready, okay? So I want everybody to think of the person that you are closest to. So who are you closest to? Now, what are they good at? Okay, I'm gonna give everybody time to comment. So get your answers ready, go ahead and comment. The person that you're closest to, what are they good at? Okay, so I'm going to Think of Dan, and I know that he is good at ex taking a big, huge task and making it like step by step. Like, here's what I need to do to get it done. Do 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 do. And if I see a big, huge task, I'm like, oh, where am I gonna start? What the heck? So think of that person and write what they are good at. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get your guys' answers in. Do 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 do. Wait, what's the Jeopardy? Do 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 do. <laughs> Okay, so go ahead and put in what you, what your friends get at, or a significant other. Okay, now I want you to take a minute and write what you're good at. Okay, so I, you know, I had this like crazy aha moment, like. I didn't know what I was good at, right? Like, I don't know what I'm good at. I know what I'm, what's hard for me. That's really easy to figure out. Now, if I'm trying to talk to Jenny and, and I'm trying to tell her what I'm good at, I'm not gonna know what to say. But since I've been doing this with you guys, I've learned that I have a different perspective on hair, 
okay? So the things that I do aren't necessarily what everybody else is processing in their mind. And I've only known that because you guys ask questions and I'm like, oh, I thought like everybody just knew that. So what I've been coming to the conclusion of is that, you know, when things are very easy for you or like when you're looking at somebody and, or something and saying like, ooh, like I could do that or I would do that and that's like what is easy for you to do and I I think it's really funny how so we have this little experiment too so I hope you guys have all your little answers in about like you know what other people are good at now I have you found that it's harder to write what you're good at I found it challenging I don't know if everybody else is it's a tricky thing to figure out and it's awesome if you know what you're good at and we're just trying to do a little exercise. So we're gonna do one more exercise and then we'll get on to the Q&A with products. So for this next one, there is no wrong answer, okay? The wrong answer doesn't exist because it's just your perspective on things. But I want everybody to sit on a ground level of a building, okay? And then you can see the second level of the building, okay? Now, there has to be a way up to the next level and I want you to picture a stairway okay to get to the second floor so what is the first thing that comes to your mind all right so think about it okay so Tammy what was the first thing that came to your mind when we talked about it we talked about this earlier today and I ran the little experiment in the warehouse it was very interesting everybody had a different answer it was really cool so everybody, you've got your answers out there ready? Okay, so Tammy, what did you picture first? The first thing I pictured was I needed where I was gonna put the steps and like move everything, clean everything, get everything ready to start it. Yep, and Tammy's an organizer, okay? She's very good at like, not an organizer, mm -hmm. yeah, like she's really good at cleaning and making sure things are going to flow effectively. That's what she does. So Jenny, what did you, what, what was your first thing you pictured? My first thing was figuring out how it was going to slope and what the measurements would be for each stair so that they were all even. Yes. Okay. So I'm picturing Jenny as more of like an uh, like an architect or a super or like a what do, what do you do when you're building a building? Uh, I should know this. My dad's going to just have a heart attack that I can't think of the name right now. It's supervisor? Not a, family, not a supervisor. No. Superintendent. You're shaking the table like crazy. <laughs> She's over here going like. Da, 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 da. Okay. So anyway, whatever it is, a foreman maybe. Okay. So you know she's she does things like that. She gets it ready. She pictures like different things. For me, I pictured like the whole staircase and what the carpet was going to look like, what the railing was going to be painted. I had that whole picture in mind. So I think it's an interesting concept to see how everyone pictures things different and they have a different approach on things. It made me realize that we all have different approaches to using products. And I thought, all right, well, let's talk about how we use products. So today we are talking about how to get the most out of your products. and how they work and how to use them, all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna start with a product and then if you have any questions about how to use products or what kinds of things, and it seems kind of simple but it's really funny. We have little funny exercises, okay. So first thing I'm gonna start with is shampoo. So with shampoo, you want to have um, a very soaking wet head, okay. So you have a very soaking wet head. Now everybody, I want you to, I'm gonna pretend pump too. I have an empty bottle here. Okay, so I want everybody to take your hand and put a pretend pump in, okay? Okay, so you've got your pretend pump in. Now, what's the first thing you do when you shampoo? Okay, okay, so everybody goes like this. So I went, I did this in the warehouse yesterday and every single person went like this. And I was like, oh, wait, you guys all do this? Like, I don't do that. <laughs> and so we discussed. So, um, so I wanna share with you what I do. And what I do is, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is show you how much I use so that you guys can see how much I use. Okay, that's about a half a pump, okay? So that's how much I use. And it's probably too much now because I got my hair cut, but I, that's how much I use. And Jenny, you're what? Not even half a pump. Jenny, come over here and show, show them. Okay, you gonna show them yours? Well, you gotta show them your hair too. You gotta okay, get in there. so not as much hair. <laughs> I have hair. Pretty close. All right. So, I use about that much. Okay, it's so spread mine out, is spread out a lot, but probably a quarter of a pump. Okay. Yep. So we have our quarter of a pump. Okay. Let me get this. Okay. 
And then we're going to show you what we do. So everybody else does this and they like rub their hand in. And I go in and I distribute it, okay? So I take like a little bit and then I put it on my fingertips and then I place it up here. And then I distribute more and then I place it in here and then I use the last part and then I get the ends, okay? So the reason I do that is because I really want the shampoo mostly distributed up at the top and then it will run down because my hair is soaking wet and then I have all the sudsing and everything like that that you can do. So, so it's very important how you distribute it because we've had people that like just start plopping it on or something like that. There's all kinds of different ways. But it's interesting to me that every single person went like this. I think I pictured my dad like distributing like the cement on the bricks so that he got it right. And it was like, okay, I know how to distribute it right. Like you just put a little bit here and then a little bit more here and a little bit more. Okay. That's one of the number one questions. How can you only use one pump of the shampoo, but it's how you distribute it? Yeah, and because I, my thought is, is when everybody did this, you've automatically absorbed a bunch in your hand. And my, my thought is that you want to distribute it, not distribute it here, right? You want to distribute it onto your hand. So you don't want to absorb it in here. Okay, so that's the first thing. I use a half a pump and it's very concentrated and if your hair is soaking wet, you will have efficient, like an efficient amount of suds, is that right? An effective amount of suds, that's right, effective amount. Okay, so do we have any shampoo questions? I feel like I wanna change this YouTube one a little bit. There we go. Okay. Well, that was the number one one. How can you only use just one pump? Like, okay. You completely explain that. Then okay. they're asking about dry shampoo. Okay. Will so, there be any? <laughs> yeah, will there be any? So we'll work on other products, but we'll, we'll address, like, will there be things later? This is about how can I help you most effectively use what you're, what you're using. We got so, one that just came in. Okay. How long does the shampoo last? How does... Okay. So shampoo on a grand scale, you know, can... For, for me, like a bottle like this will last me probably six months. So, um, because I'm using a half a pump to three quarters of a pump, depending on how many days it's been since I washed. And I usually go like, I would say four, I'm on day five today. So I'm kind of stretching it out because of today's lessons. I wanted to show you that you can go to day five and still look pretty much the same. Tammy has had her aha moment. I've been trying to get her to not be an everyday shampooer for months I, since she's worked here i'm sure of it and she is on day four today it's a game changer so one of the things you want to know about stretching out your shampoos and washes is that it takes you about a month for your scalp to transition because your scalp will produce more oils because you're stripping your scalp of the oils every time you shampoo so it wants to produce more because that's its way of nourishing your hair. So your scalp doesn't know why you're taking all the nourishment away, but you are. So um, the more you shampoo your hair, the more your scalp will produce. So um, it's very important that you learn to stretch that out and you have to teach your scalp that you're going to stretch it out. And the more you stretch it out, the more you can stretch it out. So you too can be a five day <laughs> wearer if you want. You okay. want actually, no, so there's a couple more questions okay. just about the shampoo. Yeah. How long should you leave the shampoo on your hair, like in the shower? Okay. Like so I don't, you know, like for me, it's not, it's about covering it, right? Like, so imagine when you wash your hands, right? You put the soap in and then there's two points to this. One is that your soap, when you rub it, doesn't do anything unless you put water in there, right? It doesn't suds until you soap and then water, okay? So that's one thing. And then think of how fast your hands feel clean, right? So your hair doesn't need a long time to, it's not trying to absorb the shampoo, the shampoo is washing things off. So the goal is to just get it distributed and then you can wash. So you don't need to leave shampoo on. It's not providing nourishment, it's providing a cleanser, which is different, just like soaping your hands and then you know, scrub it and then you're good. You don't need to wait. Now, when, you, when it comes to conditioner, it's another story. So conditioner is very different. So before we put the pump of conditioner in our hands, I want you to do this, I want you to pretend to squeegee your hair dry, right? Like if, if you're about to get on out of the shower and you don't want it dripping on the floor, okay? So you do this, that is what you want to do pre-conditioner, okay? So every time before you pump your conditioner, you want to like squeegee, you want your hair 
dry and receptive. The reason you want it dry is because the goal of the conditioner is to bring nourishment to your hair of some sort, whatever that particular conditioner does. So you want to squeegee it out so that you can then put your conditioner on, okay? So you want your hair as dry as possible. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily take a towel in or anything, but just as, because if the sponge, so like imagine if you're cleaning up a mess and you had a soaking wet sponge and you had to absorb a bunch more water, you cannot get more on there, right? It's just gonna run off. So that's in effect how the conditioner will work. So you want to squeeze the sponge out before you try to absorb more. So your goal is to absorb the nourishment from the conditioner, okay? So um, what you wanna do is squeeze out your conditioner or your hair so that you can now pump your conditioner, okay? So I am the same amount of um, shampoo and conditioner and so is Jenny. We do an equal size pump of the conditioner. So I'm a half a pump of this. And Jenny, you're a quarter pump? About a quarter. I'm like half to three quarter pump now that I cut like six inches off. Because, and, and this is the other fun thing. So when you're doing conditioner, I distribute it different. So we put our pump of conditioner in, okay? Now, I do the same kind of distribution system where I put a little bit on each of my hands and I just leave that other, like the puddle or the main <laughs> distribution center <laughs> in the palm of my hand. So I take a little bit and I put it on my fingertips. And now because it's nourishment, I'm really trying to get it on the ends first. So I do the ends and then I get some more and then I go up here and then I get the rest and then I put it on the top, okay? And I'm making sure that I get it on the ends as well. So the main thing is, is that you want to provide the nourishment to towards the ends because they're the most aged part of your hair and at the top is very fresh and new so it doesn't need as much nourishment because actually the scalp is doing its nourishing up there. Now, there's a lot of people that have, um, like Jenny, do you take conditioner all the way to your scalp now or no? Mm -mm. No. So you never do? Never. How far out. up do you go on your scalp? I start about mid shaft. Wait, they down. can't and see you. You gotta come over here and point it out or come oh. on camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I usually start applying conditioner about mid shaft and work down. Once in a while, I'll take extra if I have it and just rub it through my scalp just to give it a little, I don't know, maybe it'll condition Nourishment. my scalp. Okay, okay. You <laughs> but like normally, no, I just mid shaft to ends. Okay. Yeah, and I don't, I don't ever look to condition my scalp. I'm looking to condition my hair. I think the scalp provides its own nourishment. So you put it on the scalp? Once it's in a while. Once in a while, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know why, I just never have. Because A, it's hard for things to reach my scalp because my hair's thick, so I just, <laughs> I'm never worried about it, okay. So we actually had a lady that asked, um, you know, how do I feel the shampoo on my scalp if I don't use two pumps? Like she needed to have two pumps and I was thinking, like it would be really, it's really not about like feeling it on your scalp necessarily, it's about distributing it on your hair so that your scalp you know, it'll get clean. Like, there's no way your hair isn't, your scalp isn't going to get clean in all of that if your hair is soaking wet and everything like that. So, you know, don't be so worried about, just like we don't overanalyze a curl, you don't want to overanalyze how soapy your head feels because you can, you can get clean even without that sudsy feel. That's a big difference maker, um, I think, for a lot of people. And one of the thing about the suds is that it, it's coming from sulfates. And so there's a bunch of different kinds of sulfates. I want to be clear about that because there are um, sulfates that fade your color and there are also sulfates that do not. And I am not a chemist, so I don't, I, I'm not gonna try and get in any details on that, but, I, but they do exist, like the harmful sulfates and the sulfates that are um, like good for your hair. So anyway, what you wanna do is just make sure it's color safe because some of them that are the harsher sulfates are what fade your color. Okay. So, that's shampoo and conditioner. They want to know is, do you always have to use conditioner? And they want to know if you specifically always use conditioner. Yes, every time I shampoo, I condition every single time because I like the nourishment in my hair because my hair naturally feels like horse hair. Now, I know some shampoos and conditioners are very different. Actually, we had, um, you know, um, Sinead in Ireland who she said she literally was down to like, she was resorting to um, baby shampoo and the baby shampoo was what she only thought she could do with her hair because everything was getting too heavy for her 
for her for her and she was you know struggling to figure out and she said I had given up on my hair until I tried this shampoo and conditioner and this shampoo and conditioner like has freed her and has allowed her to do exactly what we say it's going to do it's going to you know allow you to hold your style longer it's going to allow you to have more body and fullness but if you're like me who has really thick hair it somehow makes Jenny's more full and Tammy's more full and more body and it somehow makes mine more lean because I don't want it that full so we just say that it performs best for you um, because it really just gives your hair its healthiest performance right and for me that means it's more silky feeling because my hair is so horse hair like a piece of wheat and Jenny is more lean so it allows it to be full it gives your hair life <laughs> and how long do you leave your conditioner on Okay, so um, I, I leave my conditioner on while I wash up and everything or shave or whatever I need to do. I don't really time it um, that much. I used to when I was a kid, I would like count to 60 or count to two minutes because I felt like it was forever. But now I just kind of stay in there and just whatever. I just let it sit on as long as I can because it can go like two to five minutes, but every conditioner is different what it recommends, but ours is two to five minutes. So I, I don't usually go like five minutes because oh, I guess it might take you five minutes to shave. I don't know. I never thought about it. Depending on what you're doing. It's <laughs> ironic, but I'm seriously not good at keeping track of time. My husband will vouch for that, that I'm always right on time. Okay. The only other question I have, one, they just want to yep. know your opinion okay. about two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, two-in-one deals. Right. And I think, you know, my my best opinion on this is your hair's performance. If your hair is performing well, stick with what you have that is the main thing is your hair holding its style well is it lasting long enough as long as you want right like I force myself like I easily could have gone you know a couple more days but like five days seems like a really long time to me <laughs> like it's a really long time to not wash your hair and granted I love it because I don't have to blow dry as often but really it kind of feels like okay that's enough <laughs> But, so the point of that is like, make sure that it's lasting you long enough. Like if you can't go two days between shampoos, then I would suggest trying to find something that might work better for your hair. Um, but I'm, I'm a believer in your hair will tell you if it's performing well, if it, if it can hold the curl, if it can um, stay straight for you. I mean, I know humidity is a factor, but, um, and then, you know, how it looks, does it, have shine in it do you have to work very hard at it because it shouldn't have to be a lot of work like now I'm to the point where I can just um, let my hair air dry which is never something I've been able to do in my life have you tried air drying your hair with since you've been using the shampoo and conditioner either one of you mm -hmm. and how does it work for you it's, it, a, it's not as full for it, you but well and it, it doesn't usually I would have frizzies or flyaways it just feels smoother okay and Tammy, have you gone without blow drying? I, I don't I know. I always kind of blow dry, but I just leave it like 20% wet yet. Okay. And let that last a little bit before I start styling it. Okay. So, you know, m the goal is, is that, you know, it makes your life easier. So if your shampoo and conditioner routine is working for you and making your life easier, that's what it should be doing. If it feels like a challenge or it feels like you're really having to think about the routine, then I would suggest maybe looking into a different routine. But I mean, if what you have works, then it works. It's great. That's what you want. The goal is to make your life easy and your hair be nourished is the key. And if it's nourished, it doesn't need a lot of other things to make it be like that you know what I mean <laughs> so you don't have to do like 10 other products after to make up for whatever it's not doing for you okay okay and then there was a question about if our shampoo and conditioner are keratin safe and yes because yeah. there is keratin in them yes there's keratin in them so they are keratin safe yes Thank you. Jenny knows that she's more of the chemist than me and she keeps track of all of that stuff. I, I, I just, I am a performance based person. I just like it to perform for me. Okay. So on to next or do we have another question? Are we good? Last question we should, they want to know about, is there, um, like something smaller they can buy to try it out first, which we have the travel buddy. Oh yeah. So we have like, so we have the travel, um, um, set, the time traveler set. This is shampoo, conditioner, thermal protectant, and hairspray. So that's available. 
And then we also have just the travel buddies, which is shampoo and conditioner on our website. So yeah, absolutely, you can have those to try. And once in a while, we do little things like if you buy an iron, we just pop them in there. So if you're interested in us popping the shampoo samples in and you've bought an iron, you know, just say, hey, can I get the shampoo samples in with my iron? Or if you're buying a blow dryer, like just write us. We, we have those samples around for people who want to try them. So yeah, absolutely. If you're placing an order, because then otherwise we have to pay for shipping for everything. So, so place it with an order. Like just uh, email customer service. I'm sure customer service will love that, huh, Tammy? Yeah, uh, we love throwing. We love when we yeah. ask. Okay, good. I, I thought you were like going to be, it's going to create a lot of work. Nope. That's okay. Ching. We're there for you. Okay. So uh, next, why am I picking this back up? Okay. Oh, upstaged. Okay. So um, thermal protectants. Okay. Let's talk about when to apply thermal protectants and how long they work for, things like that, okay? So, I'm going to tell you my theory, and I don't know if we have a fact on um, how long they actually last, but I'll tell you what I do and how I use it and it's been effective for me. So, thermal protectants. I like to apply when your hair is damp, okay? The reason is because it helps get into your like if you picture your hair as being a sponge, it, it absorbs into the sponge, right? Like when it's not, you know, like when, it, when a sponge is like hard and dry, right? You can't like get anything, you know what I mean? It doesn't like pick stuff up the same. So I, I picture hair kind of like a sponge that if it was just a little bit damp, right? It's really effective. If it's soaking wet, it's not effective. If it's super bone dry, it's not effective either. So what the goal is, is to get it in at the right amount of moisture in your hair. So I like mine to be not dripping wet, not crazy dry yet. So I will, uh, and you know, some thermal protectants will be different. So if they say apply in damp hair, this is how you find the dampness, I guess is what <laughs> the dampness level, <laughs> the right amount of dampness. Okay. So what you want to do is really um, apply it when your hair isn't bone dry and is more towards damp, you know what I mean? That in between stage where it's very brushable and close to, um, close to dry, but not quite. So then you really want to be effective about how you cover it. So when we talk about hairspraying, we're talking about spraying with purpose and really close, closer to it to be effective. When you're looking to spray in a thermal protectant, you're looking to distribute it throughout the hair more so than being over just the top, right? So you don't want to spray down over the top. You want to spray into it, okay? With purpose. Yeah, spray it with purpose. <laughs> it's a different kind of purpose. <laughs> spray with purpose. Jeez, my hair is sticking over here. Okay. Um, so thermal protectants. So one of the things about thermal protectants, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions on thermal protectants. So if you have one, like start, because this is one of those things, like I don't necessarily know what I know about thermal protectant that you don't know. So if you ask a question about it, I'll do my best to answer it for you. So uh, the way I look at thermal protectant is that it will last me until I shampoo my hair again. Now, if you full on curl your hair four days in a row and haven't reapplied it, I would think I would reapply it at day three, right? But day two or something, I, I don't know that I would. And um, for me, I feel like it's adhered to the hair, right? Like if you apply it in the right time, then it's, it's in the hair until you wash it out is the way I look at it. Now, I do not have any proof on that. It's just my theory. So, um, and it works. I, I don't have burnt hair. So, <laughs> so okay, that's good. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure that your thermal protectant is doing the right thing for you because when I was, um, making after I'd made the iron a couple of manufacturers had sent me thermal protectants and what I noticed about them is that they really took my hair and well like it wouldn't hold curl and I was like wow if my hair doesn't hold curl with the thermal protectant this is crazy so some of them can be very heavy and have like a lot of silicones or whatever it is that weighs the hair down or makes it too slippery and it, it, that's not effective. Like a thermal protectant that doesn't hold curl to me isn't effective. So make sure that you understand what it's doing for your hair. The thermal protection. Okay. Is there any questions on thermal protection? There's a question about, a lot of people always ask this one about showering and going to bed. Uh -huh. They're wanting to know, do you apply it to the wet hair or dampen it when you plan to style? Okay. Say it again. 
They want to know when you apply the upstage. Yeah. Should you do that, like when you shower at nighttime and you go to bed kind of with wet hair? Yeah. Do you put it on then, or do you put it on in the morning, and do you need to redampen your hair? I I would start with it at night, and then if you um. If it's not, your hair will tell you the answer. If it's not looking like your hair is effective, you know, it's not effectively um, being a heat thermal treatment for you then, then I would reapply in the morning. But to me, as long as you don't like use uh, your pillow as your towel, you know what I mean? So if, if you like sh -sh -sh, boom right to the pillow, like it may not be as effective, right? So it might like not have absorbed in the hair. But if you give it a chance to absorb in or adhere with the hair, however the product works, then you know, you're know you giving it a, 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 enough opportunity to do what it needs to do, I think. And I think it also helps your you comb through your hair easier. Yes. It does for me anyway. Does it for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, I don't know. Yeah, my hair is never hard to comb through, but I have heard that a lot, actually, that, um, like, the thermal protectant, because I wanted, like, enough amount of slip in it, like, I wanted grip, but I still wanted it to feel like silky hair, um, so I think that's, you know, part of the benefit of it, is that it a helps comb through. For me, it helps my hair look not like horse hair <laughs> as much. And they want to know how much do you use or how should you spray it? Like is it one, two, okay. three, four? So how do I spray? So I just kind of, yeah, four on each side for me and I'll probably give a shot like in the back as a courtesy. <laughs> <laughs> it's my courtesy shot. <laughs> okay. So yes, it's it's about four pumps for me on on each side, I think. And Jenny, do you know how many you are? Jenny got a funny pump sprayer, so she sprays it into her hand and then and distributes it. Right? How many pump, pumps do you do in your I hand? I do about five or six. Okay, but it yeah. does my whole head hair. Yeah. So. so apparently Jenny's is spraying like directly out. Did you bring that in for us to look at? Yeah, yet? I forgot. Oh geez. I actually kind of like it now that I'm used oh, to it. <laughs> she likes that like distribution method. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> I like your I like your positive attitude about it. It's so great. It's so great. They also want to know should they apply it to the ends if it's damp if you have damaged ends, should you be putting more like I would focus on yeah, that? I would definitely focus on the ends then. If your ends seem more damaged, then I would for sure um, focus a little bit more on the ends, maybe give an extra squirt or two at the end. And it also has a good hold to it if you want lift at your oh skin yeah skin, so oh how did I forget I yeah love, I love that is yeah. that is a very helpful hint um so it was funny my mentor when when he taught me how to blow dry he would take this one spray and like blow dry at the scalp and it would really allow the scalp to get more oomph there so um that's one of the things I wanted in this is to be able to do that I don't know how I forgot to mention that I guess it's because it's how to use stuff okay so but I take this and just distribute it at the scalp and Jenny does too before you blow dry and it allows do you see how I can just get more oomph there like just by doing that so it allows you to be able to do that so if you spray it at your scalp now I don't know have you ever overloaded it is there like a certain amount you use or no I'm not I haven't either I haven't I haven't done it to the point where I'm like oh it's greasy feeling or something it doesn't do that mm -hmm. so what you want to do is just spray it in at the scalp before you blow dry and it will help give more hold and lift especially like if you have a calic area that's a great um, way to control a calic before you blow dry and one of the last things is just you should always put it on before you use the time iron right yes I would use it you know like it's, it's a thermal protectant, so everything depends on how good you are with your hair, right? Like, you know, um, nothing is going to, like, no thermal protectant is going to protect against, like, really bad damage. Like, if you over blow dry your hair and then you overheat your hair, it can only protect so much, right? And that's, like, where that damp sponge comes in versus, like, a really hard sponge. If you let it get to that point of no return, nothing can help you. Do we have that cord? That's what I should be using for to show this example. Let me show you what thermal protection can do for you. And I'll actually keep this for timeless too. So this is our healthy hair. Healthy hair looks like a nice smooth cord, right? When you first get a cord. Now, if you're doing heat damage, you're causing the cuticle layer to have problems in it, right? And so the goal of the thermal protection is to lock that area in and, and provide you know um, the ability for your hair to be able to withstand heat 
Now, if you're doing damage really hard, eventually you like strip that layer off that is your protective layer. So if you're doing too much, the thermal protectants will not protect against this, right? They protect against normal, <laughs> normal kind of use. Do you know what I mean? And then if you like get too far, then you strip it of everything and that's when you start getting broken ends and things like that. So we have, when we do a blow dry video, I'm gonna talk to you a lot about this because like Tammy, I have now worked her through how to keep her ends from doing this from blow drying. It's very important. Okay, did you guys have a question or no? No, that is okay. it right now. So that's thermal protection, okay. Uh, next, what what is the next thing people do? So for us, our thermal protection is our builder and it's our, you know, holder, like it does so many things. So like for us, it's shampoo, condition, thermal protectant, and that's it. That's all you need. And then after that, it's finishing touches. Um, now, if you have like mousses or gels and things like that, they pr do a whole other thing. So like my son today was trying to use hairspray and he was trying to use it to then shape his hair. And I was like, well, that's not the purpose of hairspray. You know, you need gel to shape because he has this calic area that grows when it gets longer. It gets all, <laughs> that's when he knows he needs a haircut because his calic will start sticking out. And so he was trying to spray hairspray and stick it down. And I'm like, that's not the way hairspray works. Okay. So what gel does is it helps to shape and mold and bend hair into a certain spot, right? So his hair was sticking out and he wanted it to stick. So gel is a sticky surface, so it can, if you put it in and then stick it together, it will help hold that. So, you know, it's, it's a different concept. And I, you know, for girls, it's more about scrunching and getting, you know, like hair to stay in a spot, right? So if you have natural curl, now, what it does is gel will clump hair and really, if it's got a wet look, it will usually make that wet look stay. So if you don't love a wet look, then don't apply it in wet. And you can have your hair more separated and that will be less clumpy. So when hair is wet, it, it, it sticks together more and when it's dry, it fans out more. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else? <laughs> okay, so spraying hairspray. Let's talk about spraying hairspray. So, the spraying with purpose, okay. So what we wanna do with hairspray is make sure that you're getting what you want out of your sprays, okay? So if you want more volume, then lift. If you want less volume, then press down. If you want um, a certain area to hold, then get it in the place and then spray it there. So like with my son, he wanted this to, it was not sticking far enough over, he wanted to do this and then push it over. So instead he should push it where he wants it to be and then spray it. So that's how hairspray works, right? You put it in place and its goal is to then hold it in place. I'm trying to think of what, like, you know how when they're building a building and then they put a brace there to hold it that's the goal of hairspray. It's to hold it in place once you get it there. You don't want to use the hairspray as a tool to then move something around. That's not exactly how it works. It's more about getting it to hold in its place. So then you have to think about how effective, like, or what you're trying to hold in its place, right? So if I have a lighter piece, a light spray will do. If I have a heavier piece, then I might need a heavier spray, right, to hold. So you can think about it that way. And then if you are trying to get this all to work together, then you'll wanna spray from the top down and let it all form together and shape together so that it can stay. And then it gives you a little correction time because where hairspray dries is where it holds, okay? So it gives you a little correction time, but I wouldn't look at it as like a molding time, which is different, molding and shaping time. And they do have questions about that. They just wanted to know, does the hairspray allow your hair to move or is it like really tough? Okay, so did we all see how much I just sprayed right here? Watch. Oh, that's almost like that. Uh, you know when they do that with... That's funny, I never tried that before. It's actually really... Wow. Like I don't have any crunchies, but it still will hold it in place, right? So I still have that same shape there because it has memory instead of like that crunchy or gooey hold, okay? It still gets a little gooey at the thing and you just scratch that off, but that's what memory resins do. And I loaded it with memory resin. So that's the one little downfall of the hairspray, but it, it's worth it in the rest of it. Do you think? Yeah, I, I just yeah. automatically scratch it. Yeah, me too.
That's the only. Hmm? I just learned spraying with purpose really helps. <laughs> yeah, spraying with purpose really helps. It's so Instead cute. Instead of. Yeah, Tammy used to spray like from down here and spray up. And she would like shoot it up at herself and I was like, oh my gosh, so much has to fall down on your clothes and your counters and everything. Did it make a big difference for you like in, in the spray of your hairspray? Yes, and actually what it's done, like I used to go through a bottle every two weeks of any kind of hairspray that I used to use. And now that I can spray with purpose, I still have the first bottle of selfie that I got probably yeah. a month and a half ago. Yeah. It's like Crazy. game changer for her. I was wondering how she always ran out of hairspray. I was like, now you must really love hairspray. But it was that she was wasting so much of it and didn't know how to use it effectively. So spraying with purpose was a game changer for um, Tammy. And that's one of the things that we, you know, wanted to think of for you. It's not about like, my goal isn't to, you know, see how much shampoo I can get you to buy. It's not that, it's how effective can our shampoo be for you. So I think it's a big difference. And, and I actually answered that on like a, a, on the public figure page or whatever, the um, Facebook page. Like a girl asked, what's the difference between our shampoo and conditioner in um, professional products? And at the end, I think it was, you know, um, wh what did I say it was? The intention. Mm -hmm. So our intention is for it to last you longer and work better for you and be more productive in the whole time as opposed to selling you more. So that's like a big difference. Like our intention is for it to work amazing for you and do the most for you so you can get the most out of each bottle. Like I don't think, I think most manufacturers would probably think I'm crazy that I'm trying to get it to last you six to eight months. Like that's my goal, mm -hmm. not to sell you more. Okay. We did have a couple of questions about ingredients and the, one of them asked if we have ingredients listed on our website, and yes, we do. They can find all the ingredients about our products on there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So and actually, you answered that question too. Somebody had said, "How can you feel so passionate about creating your own products?" Which you completely just answered, which is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm very passionate. It's funny because that's one of those things I didn't realize I was passionate about. You know how in the beginning we were talking about how do you build your staircase? Which, by the way, I want to talk about a little bit too. Um, <laughs> But we, you know, like the big thing is, is I had no idea that um, how I thought about using products and things like that were different because it was just easy for me until I started like testing people and like, here, hand you a hairspray, spray it. What do you think? What do you like? And then I would watch them do things and I was like, oh, wow, that's very different. So, you know, one of the things that I had no idea is that I was like paying attention to all of these things that I didn't know everybody was, wasn't paying attention. I didn't know everybody didn't know how to, you know, I don't know, use things in the same way or as effectively necessarily, or, you know, like didn't think about how to make things last longer. <laughs> like that's a big deal to me. Or like, you know, that the, the rings on here would help you decipher your shampoo and conditioner. Like, I think some people don't even know that's an issue until they like use the difference or know the difference, try the difference. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what, what am I saying? Okay. And that's what you're just good at creating all that. So that's something you're good at. Oh, thanks. It's funny how it is easy to see. So I would like to know by a show of hearts, how many people it was easy for you to know what what you're good at. Is it easy for everybody? So I want to show that. And I know on YouTube it's different. So you guys will have to just comment like, yes, it was easy for me. Yes, it was easy for me. So um, I, I just think it's harder for people to understand what they're good at. So, um, and then also, what was I going to ask next? Okay, so I think that's kind of it. Oh, one more thing. Timeless. How did I almost forget that? Okay, so timeless. Um, so this is like when you're going to, you know, there's different things that can relate to this, like a shine spray or something that, um, what, what are other things? I don't know how to use it without Smooth. using the name. Smoothing and silking, silkening, <laughs> shine, <laughs> um, things like that. So repair. So this one helps with repair and making sure your hair feels silky while not losing your curl. So I sprayed um, thermal protectant on this side and I'm going to spray uh, timeless on this side. So again, it's about finding the distribution um, Like the greatest the the spray area that will cover the most That's what I'm trying to do is effectively cover everything and this one I think can spray a little bit more over the top, but this one is about um, making your hair look smoother and feeling softer 
Now, the way I look at it is like this. So if you could consider these potholes, right? So the goal is to cover potholes. Um, so if this was like a road and this was a pothole, there's many ways to cover a pothole, right? You could use dirt or you can rip up all the, you know, what is it called? Concrete or um, asphalt. asphalt, yeah. <laughs> and then relay it down or you could go through and tar the road so things like that right so whatever is most effective or how hard you know like depending on how the road looks so for me what timeless does is it covers these potholes in the most healthy way possible and it allows your hair to be healthy and feel healthy and then what happens is your hair doesn't want to absorb the moisture out of the air as much. So that's, you know, what how what makes Timeless effective at, you know, being like an anti-humidity spray and also um, making it want to like make your hair feel silky and shiny and smooth without being like oily. What it does is it makes the hair feel healthy. Now, what I don't know about Timeless yet is, is it like ripping up the asphalt and starting over? That's the only part I'm, I'm a little, you know, I, I'm on the fence about. So we're, I'm trying to figure out how to get to the bottom of that for you. So I will do my best to figure that out and see if it really does repair to the core. That's what I really want to know. Or if it's more effective at just making it look and feel that way for like a little while. That's what I don't know. So I'm on the fence because my hair just feels so great. And I, only, I spray it in like once a week, I think now. Liquid gold. Okay. So do we have more questions about? That one anything? about timeless that okay. matches perfect timing here. Someone's asking what helps with flyaways and frizz. Oh, yeah, absolutely timeless, like hands down. I wonder if I have flyaways and frizz. Can you see? I'll try and spray and see. So I'll just spray on the left side. Oh, I should have sprayed only the left. Darn it. Okay. So, and then you can just brush it down and you can see how smooth that makes it. So that's what we all use around here to make everything smoother and silkier. And, um, and we actually put it in the bathroom because everybody was like trying to, you know, go through hair repair here. And it was like crazy how, I cannot believe how effective it has been for everyone's strength of their hair. And everyone's hair seems to be growing so healthy so fast. And what it did for Mary, humidity. Oh yeah, and the anti-humidity is crazy. What my friend Mary is like, her hair like will grow instantly in the humidity, and it was amazing the next day. And she's like, the only difference was timeless. And so, you know, mine doesn't grow in humidity, so I can't test that as much. But I'm going to definitely look into that more to see how it does. So, if anyone's out there and has timeless and is using it for, you know, um, an anti-humidity spray, please let us know how it's doing. And anyone know if it works? Timeless works for all types of hair. Yeah, um, Jenny, you love it, and you have fine hair. Tammy has very fine hair, and she loves it's it. My favorite. <laughs> oh, it's your favorite. That'd be yeah. your go-to product. Yeah. And I love it, and I have coarse hair. So, and then we've also noticed, like on curly hair, it's very effective as well. You like you yeah. use it on Kinley, correct? Yep. It tames it. Yeah, it tames it and makes it less like frizzy looking. And it's so not it's an great oil, so it doesn't like. It yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't feel like an oil at all. Like you, you can can't spray it in your hand. And it's, yeah, yeah, I should spray it in my hand. I've never done that to see like what it feels like it in my hand. Like oh wow, it feels like water, kind of, mm -hmm. like a thick water. Yeah. It's okay. Hmm. I'm always intrigued by that stuff. I don't get the front. <laughs> I can't waste the liquid gold. <laughs> all right. So, is there anything we didn't cover? Like I, I was discussing all of this stuff with. Um, everyone and I'm so curious about what you guys did to build your staircase like so for me did I talk about what I did and mine was the vision of like you know having the whole staircase built it was funny because my brother Kier who's like um, the co-CEO he will he goes well I'd build a I'd get a ladder and get up to the second floor and I was like <laughs> of course you would get there as fast as possible and he'll get a ladder and then get a builder is what he'll do <laughs> so and I know Dan would have been at the hardware store like instantly but Dan didn't get my question so and, and it's funny because the whole point was to get him to understand that like not everybody gets a concept as easy, right? Like cryptocurrency to and like actually trading it is like challenging for me. I don't like what my hair turned into in the style. It was supposed to be more flowy. <laughs> okay, there we go. Sorry. 
We have a question, is the smell consistent throughout the product line? Yeah, exactly. Everything has the exact same smell. Um, it's different because different you know, products like um, take on the smell different. The fragrance reacts different with different like, you know, other things, chemicals or whatever. I don't know how you phrase it, but um, so, you know, everything smells a little bit different, but it's all consistent. It all has the same fragrance. So they, I, I think they all smell relatively similar. If you like one, you'll like them all. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're not heavy. They're always light. All of them oh yeah. Light. All of it is about being able to hold yeah. your curl. Like, I mean, you can't even tell I put timeless in besides that I brushed it. So it looks a little different and, and you more can smooth. always brush through it and yeah. put your fingers through it. Yeah. That's the difference is I really wanted it to be able to comb, comb or brush through for days and still have your curl. And that's so, so key to all of it. And they want to know when you put Timeless in before or after hairspray. Like when you okay, it. so that is up to you whether you want to put hairspray or Timeless first. The key is, is to make sure that um, you know what your outcome is, right? So if you wanted more silky look like this, more, you know, them to be more together, I'm not, I'm not sure if together is softer looking, then you would do Timeless second. But if you want it to be more separated, so you can see this is timeless. Okay, did I spray timeless on this side or just the top? Just like the flyaway. Okay, so if you if you um, have timeless like here, okay, so if I spray timeless first, so I'm gonna leave this side timeless after hairspray. I don't know if I even put hairspray on that side ever. Okay, so if I wanted it to be a smoother look, now let me get it to dry. So if Timeless is in first, then you have that look, right? But if I wanted it to be a little bit more beachy or full or something, then I would spray hairspray after as opposed to first. So it depends on the outcome that you want, right? If you wanted it to be more um, formed together and softer looking, then you would put Timeless on last. And everything will change. I always want to send you guys, or like, wish I could show you guys pictures after like 10 minutes or something, because that's where it really changes everything okay all right so I hope Dan got the point of that he's not the only one that didn't doesn't understand how smart he is <laughs> okay um, so you like I think that you too have like a skill set that you will not know about until you start discussing it with other people like what how you see things different than other people and I think the staircase is a good way to like start that discussion because not one person in the whole company said the same answer I thought it was very interesting that we were all going to build the staircase and everybody had a different way of going about it so mine was the complete picture and then how do we get there <laughs> and Tammy's was like let's get started after we clean up and Jenny's was like let's start measuring what's going to be the right um, level and rise to go in through these staircases so I think it's really cool and I think it'll um, help you figure out what you're good at because if you don't have a platform where you're talking to a lot of people that's how I figured out what was coming easy to me in life so thank you guys for helping me discover that i did not know all this about myself so thanks i appreciate it Ching. okay so do we have some winners i'm so excited about winners today because now you guys know exactly how to use all the little goodies you're getting we got them okay we got them ready to go okay first winner christy kramer okay Christy Kramer is our first winner, and what we're gonna do, I Tammy, can we make sure that we put a little timeless in for everybody too? Oh yeah, definitely. Because yep. yeah, we don't timeless doesn't come in here, but we're gonna give you a little sprayer thing of timeless. Where is that? Sprayer. I don't know where I put it. I'll put it. it right inside the bag. Yeah, we'll drop it in here. It's a little guy, but it's cute. Mm -hmm. You'll 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 know right away with the difference. Okay. Okay. Next one, Brianne Stockett. Brianne Stockett, winner number two. Keisha McGoy. Keisha Mag what? McGoy. McGoy. Okay. Keisha McGoy is our number three. Mina Morch. Mina Morch, number four. Logan Giles. Logan Giles. Gi uh, I don't know if it's Giles or Giles. Okay. Logan Giles or Giles. Michaela Martin. Michaela Martin, number, what are we, six? Kate. Okay. Kate. Kate Pelkofer. Pelkofer. Kate Pelkifer and Kevin. Heather McGuire. All right. Do we have a winner for an iron? I don't see. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. And the winner of the iron. Whoop. Let me get my iron. Okay. It's Amanda Inman. 
So congratulations to all our winners. And I still have to adjust my hair because it's got too smooth on me. <laughs> okay. So thank you guys so much for your questions. And we very much appreciate you joining us on this time live on Friday. Um, we will see you what next week, next Friday, 2 o'clock Central Standard Time. And we look forward to joining you again. Bye.